Welcome to Confessions of a Parent Coach. I'm coach, mother of four, and potty talker, Ann Kaplan. This is the podcast where I confess something from my own parenting and coaching life, teach a lesson around it, and answer your questions. Even we parenting experts are far from perfect, and the real magic happens when we get down with all that imperfection. We get into the gritty side of parenting here, so earbud up and dive in. Welcome into another episode of the podcast, listeners. I'm excited to be here with you again this week talking about, and I hope that the title of this episode really piqued your interest, a parenting guarantee. How can we get a guarantee about our parenting and about our own work and like doing this work and all of that stuff in a world that comes with no guarantees? Um, and the reason why I want to talk about this is because this like idea of uncertainty and how par- paralyzing uncertainty is in all aspects of our lives, but especially in parenting has been just kind of circling around recently in my coaching group, in my private um, coaching sessions. And I just felt like, you know, let's talk about this uncertainty piece. Let's talk about, you know, the flip side of uncertainty. Okay. Obviously certainty, but this idea of like, how do we know, how do we know that going in this direction is the right direction? How do we know that this is quote unquote gonna work? And as always starting us off with a confession, um, a lot of you already know that several years ago, like four years ago now, actually, our eldest son really had to have some pretty severe interventions to help him get himself back on track. And he wound up having to go away to wilderness therapy for three months. And then he lived in residential care after that. And what people, it's not everybody knows is wilderness therapy was recommended to me multiple times before we actually, um, wound up sending Elijah. And, um, I said this so many times to so many people during that there's probably like about a year and a half where wilderness therapy had been suggested to us kept coming up multiple times and i was just totally resistant to it for really obvious and understandable reasons like no one wants to send their kid away and it almost felt like rick you know admitting that things were super extreme and all of that stuff but the real reason why i didn't do it is because I wasn't certain there was no guarantee that this thing was actually going to help my son. And it cost a ton of money. It felt like this really huge, like hairy, scary decision that we were making. And it felt like a crapshoot. It felt like a gamble. Like we're okay. We're going to put all of our energy and our time and our money into this, you know, bet that we're betting on. And what if it doesn't pay off? And I can't tell you how many times I said to people throughout that time, if I knew for sure it would work, I would do it like yesterday. If I knew if there was a guarantee that this definitely was going to be the thing that saved Elijah, I would have done it a, a year ago. I have said that exact thing a million times. And I bet you've said that too. Maybe not about something so extreme, like, um, most families aren't in the situation that we were in with Elijah but we've all been in that situation where we're kind of making a decision about whether we're going to go for something. And we feel like it, it feels like a gamble. It feels like a crapshoot. And that uncertainty is what keeps us stuck because when something feels like a gamble, it's hard to commit. It's hard to commit money to something. It's hard to commit our energy to it, our time to it. We want a sure thing. Like once, once like all the pieces fall into place and you can see like, okay, this is, A plus B equals C, this makes sense. We're all in. But a lot of times we can't get that guarantee beforehand. And we're kind of going on a little bit of a leap of faith. Even when I finally did send Elijah to wilderness, there was no guarantee. What really happened was we had no other choice by the time we sent him. And honestly, it would have been so much better for him and for our family if we had intervened sooner before he had had, you know, a whole nother year's worth of really hard experiences that degraded our relationships even further, but I didn't do it until my back was against the wall. And if I had been able to feel more certainty about the decision, I probably would have made it sooner, but I kept wanting that like guarantee. I didn't want it to feel like a gamble, but it did. 
We all want that sure thing, but unfortunately that desire for certainty totally keeps us stuck because there are no guarantees in life, even when we know inside that there it's time for a change. So like, think about your parenting, or you might be applying this to something totally apart from parenting in your life, but this is a parenting podcast. So we're going to use parenting examples today. You know, we all have our default parenting that we learned in childhood. Either we're doing that thing that we learned in childhood, or we're doing the polar opposite because we didn't like what we had in childhood, but either way, it's not working for us. We know we need additional tools and we need to learn them and all of that stuff. But what we don't want to face, and this is the same thing that what happened with me with the wilderness therapy is we don't want to face that ultimately we are the one who makes those things work. Like if you hire me, it's going to be because you want something to change in your family. I am going to give you those additional tools. You are going to learn them, but ultimately you are the one who determines if those things work or not, you are the one who implements that stuff. And you are the one who brings your dedication and commitment to it. You are the one who comes to me so we can troubleshoot. You are the one who makes it work. And this is why coaching is so profound because let's face it. I mean, we can all just take a parenting class or read a parenting book and that's cool, but coaching does more than that. It gives you the companionship and the accountability to use those tools There's two real messages I want you to take away from today's episode. The first is how to give yourself that certainty so you can move forward. The second is understanding why it's really hard to do that stuff on your own. So I like to use, if you've listened to the podcast at all, you know how often I talk about sports, which is never. I am not a sports person, much to the chagrin of my husband and my one of my sons at least. But my second son is on the lacrosse team at his high school. And he, this, um, over the holiday break, he decided to go and do a lacrosse skills camp for part of his break. Um, he does the face-offs in the lacrosse games in case anybody, I'm telling you before this kid joined lacrosse, I didn't even know anything about lacrosse. Like I didn't know what any of the terms were. I didn't know anything. <laughs> So I feel really proud that I can tell you that my son does the face-offs in his lacrosse team. That that's a huge leap forward into my knowledge of lacrosse compared to where I used to be. <laughs> but I could help help River be good at lacrosse by having him watch videos about face-offs, uh, maybe reading about face-offs. Maybe he could follow people on social media who do face-offs, but that's not actually going to make him good at face-offs. What helps him get good at face-offs is this kind of skills clinic, this kind of experience where he is practicing it, he's putting it into action, and there's someone watching him while he does so to say, okay, try it this way, or here's why that didn't work, or here's why you lost that face off or whatever. This is exactly, I mean, this is why, like, I think it's so funny as parents, I hear all the time, you know, I feel like embarrassed that I need to have a coach even, or I should know this stuff or whatever, but even elite athletes who are actually better at their sport than their coaches are still have coaches. There ain't no NFL teams out there without a coach. And those players are the best at football that you could possibly find. There's no point after which you cease to need companionship and accountability and learning and, you know, someone holding your feet to the fire. This is the same. Why Why would parenting be any different or any other skill on the planet be any different? So that's one reason why I really like to talk about, you know, the utility of coaching and what to expect from coaching. Because I think that's another piece of that uncertainty. It's like, man, well, it might sound cool when you're listening to a podcast or reading an email or something. But like, if you never worked with a coach before, like, what, what can you even expect and what, why would you get one? And why is that better than working with a therapist or why is that better than just kind of DIY self-education piece? Like it is very different and it might be something you've never experienced before. So it makes perfect sense that we have uncertainty around it. Let's talk about that uncertainty. You know, here's another, uh, you get two confessions for the price of one today. So a second confession for me A few years ago, I was um, stuck in indecision, not about parenting stuff, but about launching something new for my business. I 
I was thinking about launching my group that I have now and it's been running for years and I love it. But at the time when I was launching it, it was scary. I didn't know if it was going to work. You know, what if I launched this group and nobody joined or everybody didn't participate, you know, and I said this to my coach, I said, you know, I just, I don't know if I should do it or not. Cause I just, I just wish I knew that it was going to be successful. If I knew it was going to be successful, then, you know, I'd be going for it right now, like a hundred percent. And my coach, but this is such a great example of how freaking awesome coaches can be asked me one question that changed everything for me forever about everything. She said, what will you do to guarantee that it will be successful? And I realized right then and there that the way that I could have a guarantee in life and all of these things where there are no guarantees is because I could guarantee that I was going to bring it. I'm my own guarantee. I realized that um, once I started thinking about like, well, how will I make this work? Not will this work, but how am I make, going to make sure it works? Not will this be successful, but how can I guarantee it's going to be successful? What can I bring to make sure that this works out the way that I want to want it to? I stopped feeling, first of all, uncertain. And I stopped feeling kind of like out disempowered. You know, it's that that feeling of like, I don't know. And that feels really. Yeah, you just feel kind of like out of control, not in charge of your own life. And the second she asked me that question, I felt totally different. I felt completely empowered. I felt um, a lot of sense of responsibility. And it wasn't a gamble anymore. Launching this group was not a gamble anymore. The only unknown was whether I would do what it took. And that was totally in my control. Once it felt like I was betting on myself, it was a done deal because I'm a sure thing. Like I'm a known entity. I'm a known quantity. And I wish that I would have <laughs> had that wherewithal to have that attitude towards this thing with Elijah, because instead of saying all the time, like, is this thing going to work? Is this thing going to work? I don't know. So, you know, I'm not going to invest in it. If I had been able to look at it and say, okay, I'm going to make this work. Like, what am I going to do? How am I going to participate so that this thing is a done deal? I would have decided so much sooner. We would have gotten help for Elijah so much more early in his process. And it's not just blowing smoke up your ass to say something like that, even in parenting, because the truth is, and I learned this as we went through wilderness therapy, it is hugely dependent on what the parents bring to the table and the container that we create for our kids. You know this, if you're listening to the podcast, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. You don't get to decide your child's destiny. And in fact, the more we try to control it, the less um, it turns out the way we want. But we do get to guarantee that we live in the home and the family dynamic that we want to because we decide how we show up and we decide which things we participate in and which things we don't. And if you are feeling on the fence or uncertain about, for example, investing in somebody like me or, you know, getting the help and support that you know you need to get where you want to go with your family I really encourage you to sit back and say, I can decide that this is going to work. And if I am actually willing to do what it takes and bring it, this is going to be a success. That's entirely up to me. You know, like I said before, ultimately you are the one who makes all of the stuff that we work on together work. And you know, this is how I approach pretty much all of my choices now, even super daunting things. And instead of wondering, is this going to work? Is this going to work? I have a frank conversation with myself about whether I'm willing to make it work. And I still might decide not to do it, but not because I'm uncertain or scared or I don't know. It's because I answered that question and said, yes, I am willing to make it work. Or, you know, honestly, no, I'm not. I'm not willing to do what it takes to make it work. I'm not willing to commit that way. If I'm really being honest with myself, I don't want to do it. So if you don't want to do it, then it's not going to work. And it is a waste of money at that time, right? Or it is a waste of time or energy or whatever. So if you're feeling uncertain about committing to doing the work that we talk about in this podcast, for example, ask yourself, how will you guarantee your success? 
Are you willing to do what it takes? This exercise is so empowering because you gain so much clarity and you might actually be able to look at yourself and say, you know what? Even though I don't like where my family is at right now, even though I don't like where my kid is headed, even though I I don't like my relationship with my kid right now, if I'm really being honest with myself, I'm not really willing to do extra work to make it to be different. That's really important information for you to know. And that might be something that you decide to work on that instead or not. You might just say, you know what? All right. So I guess I'm okay with it. In the end, the honest truth is. I I don't like it, but I don't dislike it enough to do something about it. And so now I can either stop complaining about it. Maybe I can get curious about why I don't want to bring it, why I don't want to do the work, all of that stuff. But at least you'll have that clarity. You will know if this work is the right path for you. And that is power. So the other thing that's really helpful and this is why I wanted to talk about the coaching thing at the same time that I talk about this uncertainty thing is you don't have to make these decisions alone. Like here I am posing questions to you through a podcast, ask yourself, you know, am I willing to do what it takes? But if you're working with a coach, your coach's job is to ask you those questions and you don't have to figure out if you really are ready to go for this by yourself. That's what those discovery calls are for. And whether you're thinking about working with me or anybody else under the sun, all of us do consultations to help you figure out, am I actually going to do this? How am I going to make sure this is a success? What might get in my way? And what am I going to do about that? So it doesn't, you don't have to solve that stuff for yourself. You don't have to figure this out alone. Even if the thing you need help figuring out is whether or not you want help figuring stuff out. (laughs) So I really encourage you to set up the discovery call that we talk about every week. This is your opportunity to actually have that um, really clear, honestly, I'm going to say honestly, confrontation with yourself. You can confront what's really going on in your family, what you really truly feel about it, any uncertainty you have about it. Because even though I obviously can't predict your future, I can tell you that after working with hundreds of parents over many, many years, if you're ready to go all in, this work is a slam dunk. The parents I work with who commit to this work with me totally change their lives and their families. And it's because they decide to make it a sure thing. It's a sure thing because we make it a sure thing. And that is the biggest message I want you to walk away from today with, whether you're thinking about working with someone like me or you're making decisions about something totally unrelated to parenting, that question, how will I guarantee that this is successful is massive. I hope that's helpful for you today. I'm excited to talk to you again next week. Have a great week, everybody. Bye. The episode is over, but there's more waiting for you. You can grab my free workbook, Getting Kids to Listen the First Time, that walks you through the fundamental principles I teach all of my clients and applies them to this very universal parenting challenge. So if you're sick of repeating yourself all day long or just want to learn more about my style, you'll definitely want to go to bit.ly slash kids who listen. And if you're ready to work with me, let's meet. Set up a free call at bit.ly slash Kaplan call, and let's create an action plan that gets you exactly where you want to go. And of course, links to all this goodness are in the show notes. Thanks for joining and I'll see you next time.